Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to learn load flow studies and which is very important topic in power system analysis and it is considered as a heart of power system analysis. After watching this video, you can able to understand what is load flow study is all about. So I will segregated the entire video in terms of some questions and the questions are what is the load flow study? What are the load flow problem consists of? Under what conditions the studies will be carried? What steps to be followed to do the load flow study? What are the other constraints placed on the solution? What are the types of buses? And finally, what is the need for slack bus? By knowing all the answers of these questions, you will be getting some idea on load flow studies. Let us go with the first question. What is load flow study? I would say this is a tool to investigate the problems in power system operation and planning. We all know very well that the power system is a combination of generation, transmission and distribution. And coming to the first part, the generation whatever the kind of energy source it may be it is converting into electrical energy why it is happening like that because we are using most of our appliances based on electricity only that's why we are converting other forms of energies into electrical energy form and here we need to underline one point that according to the rate of consumption of fuel, are we getting the same proportional output? No. Some power is not utilized by the actual load or utility. That power will be called as power loss. If we can reduce this power loss, we can get a better output. But the question is how the power losses can be minimized and where these losses are occurring and what is the critical part of the power system at which power losses are high and all these questions should be answered. So this investigation is very important for the continuous evaluation of uh, current performance of a power system and for the effectiveness of alternative plants for system expansion to meet the increased demand so that's why we need load flow studies so this is what the load flow study is all about the next question is what the load flow problem consists of it consists of calculation of power flows and the calculation of voltages calculation of voltages means default corresponding phase angles also. So coming to the first point calculation of power flows. It involves the calculation of real and reactive power flows in transmission lines and uh, whether the reactive power is within limit or not all the analysis should be there in this calculation and the second point is the calculation of voltages which is uh, simply um, the magnitude of voltage and phase angle will be calculated for each and every bus. So this is what the load flow problem consists of because every bus will be specified uh, with two quantities only out of four. So what are the four uh, quantities? Magnitude of voltage, corresponding phase angle, real power and reactive power. So any two will be specified, rest of the two we need to calculate. So calculation of power flows and calculation of voltages along with the corresponding phase angles. So this is what the load flow problem consists of. The next question is under what conditions the studies will be carried? The answer is under steady state conditions. Why? Under steady state conditions the network equations will be in the form of simple algebraic equations. In a practical system, the load and hence the generation are continuously changing. 
but for calculation purpose we assume that the loads and generation are fixed at a particular value for a suitable period of time for example 15 minutes or 30 minutes now the next question what steps to be followed to do load flow study so i would like to tell you in point wise the first point representation of the system by single line diagram and the second one determining the impedance diagram using the information in single line diagram and third point very important point formation of network equations so these equations can be established by using either the bus or loop frame of reference the coefficients of the equations depends on the selection of the independent variables that is voltage or current means either admittance or impedance uh, of the network matrices can be used okay but in uh, viewpoint of uh, computer time and memory the nodal admittance formation using nodal voltages as the independent variables is the most economic okay so next point is next step is solution of network equations so this is the most important point to understand the solution of the network equations or algebraic equations are describing the power system based on an iterative technique why simply because of their non linearity the solution must satisfy kirchhoff's laws that is algebraic sum of all flows at a bus must equal zero one or other of these laws is used as a test for convergence of the solution in the iterative computational method okay so now the next question is what are the other constraints placed on the solution i would like to answer in point wise the first point the capability limits of reactive power as we all know reactive power and voltages are related and in power system we would like to maintain the receiving end voltage at a constant value in order to achieve that we need to control the reactive power in the system so there is a clear need to limit the reactive power in order to maintain a constant voltage at the receiving end so that's why the capability limits of reactive power sources is one of the constraints in the solution of load flow study and the other point is the tap setting range of tap changing transformer and the other point is specified power interchanging between interconnected systems so these are the constraints placed on the solution of load flow study and the other question what are the types of buses we have so what are the buses we have we have basically two types of buses and the buses are generator bus buses and load buses and coming to the uh, before coming to the types or classification of buses let us see what are the quantities which are associated with each bus there are four such kind of quantities under magnitude of voltage mod v phase angle delta real power p reactive power q in load flow study two out of four quantities are specified and the remaining two quantities are to be obtained through the solutions of equations now coming to the types of buses first load bus specified quantities are pq quantities to be acquired are mod v that is magnitude of voltage and phase angle delta similarly generator bus specified are p and mod v to be obtained are q and delta and 
as i told you already we have uh, basically two types of buses generator bus and load bus apart from these two we are having one more bus that is called slat bus so the specifications are mod v that is a magnitude of voltage and phase angle the quantities to be obtained are real and reactive powers let us go with the bus individually so from bottom i would like to tell you so slat bus firstly it is also known as swing bus and taken as reference and what are the specifications mod v and delta right what are the unspecified quantities p and q remember this one so this bus provide the additional real and reactive power to supply transmission line losses since they are unknown until the final solution is obtained so this is about slat bus now the other bus is generator bus it is also called as voltage controlled bus or regulated bus or sometimes it is also called as pv bus and what are the specifications the specifications are p and mod v and unspecified values are q and delta so here the phase angles of the voltages and reactive power are unknown until the final solution is obtained the limits on the value of reactive power are also specified okay without that limitation we can't judge the final reactive power of our solution okay the other bus is load bus this is also known as pq bus and what are the specifications pq will be specified mod v and delta has to be obtained okay so this magnitude of voltage and phase angles are unknowns until the final solution is obtained so these are the brief uh, description about uh, types of buses and as i said earlier we have two buses generator and load what is the need for slat bus let us go with the final question that is what is the need for slat bus basically the power system has only two types of buses we already discussed this point they are what are they load and generator buses in these buses only power injected by the generators and power drawn by the loads are specified but power loss in transmission lines are not specified not accounted so in power system the total power generated will be equal to what sum of power consumed by the loads and losses see the relation sum of complex power of generator is equal to sum of complex power of loads plus the total complex power losses in transmission lines in other words what we can say the total complex power in transmission lines is the difference of sum of complex power of generator and sum of complex power of loads so the transmission line losses can be estimated only if the real and reactive power of all buses are known the the powers in the buses will be known only after solving the load flow equations right for these reasons real and reactive power of one of the generator buses is not specified and this bus is called slat bus this is assumed that the slat bus generates the real and reactive power required for the transmission line losses hence a slat bus for a slat bus the magnitude and phase angle of bus voltage are specified real and reactive powers to be obtained through what through load flow solution this is about load flow studies and based on this knowledge you can go with the further topics related to power system analysis i hope you understand the points and if you got any doubt please comment i would like to answer thank you so much